Hey there, and welcome back. Last time we were here, we baked the grenade. We took a high poly and a low poly and baked out the texture maps we would need to begin texturing. We also linked it to a texture project so we could actually start painting on this object. Today, we are gonna to talk about layers. We're gonna talk about paint layers and fill layers. We're gonna talk about different, different brushes, erasers, and selection tools. We are also gonna talk about editing the subcomponents of each layer, like color, height, so on and so forth. So to get started here, we're right where we left off. We're in the classic setup. We have our bake project where we baked everything out. We have our grenade, uh, which is our texture project with all of the different things. Okay, so we're gonna hit texture up in the top left, which is gonna bring us to our different tab, our texture tab, which is gonna look very familiar. It's gonna look like Substance Painter. Quick uh, navigation around here. Uh, top left, you'll probably be here in the scene. What you wanna do is definitely click into tool setting. When we create a layer, this will be where your brush setting is. You have your 3D tool scene, uh, two, uh, your 2D or your UV scene. You have the layer settings where you'll edit each individual layer. Then you have your layer stack over here on the right. Down here, just like in Substance, you're gonna have everything from your smart materials to your masks, uh, skies, uh, so you can change the environment and everything like that. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna create a new paint layer, this little brush. You'll see it'll add the paint layer. It'll also add all the layer settings. You can see in here we have active maths, albedo, roughness, metalist, normal, bump, and AL. If I wanted to add or remove a map in here, in the previous tutorial, I did not have a bump map. So what you'd wanna do is go back to your scene. You'd wanna go into the actual texture project and then down here in projection maps, what you can do is if I were to remove this, you can see it removed the bump from the active maps. You can just hit add new and you can hit bump and it'll add it back. So that is how you add an editable active map to there. Okay, back to tool settings. Okay, now that we're here, you can see we're in our paint layer, we're in our standard, everything's good. So you can click on and off what you want to affect just like in Substance Painter. You can also, if you have multiple selected, you can hit Alt and click and it'll turn everything off except for the one that you're trying to uh, edit. So in this case, the albedo or the color. Okay, you can see I have my brush map just a standard full brush. You can edit it. You have all your adjustments up here. There are some shortcuts. Um, you can also edit everything in here. Um, they have some cool things like um, tangent, uh, back face culling, back face fall off, all this kind of stuff. Play around with it. Uh, Marmoset has a good tutorial on it. I would go in there and check that out. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that uh, in, this, in this tutorial. So now that we're here, just so we can get some color on there, just like we did last time, I'm gonna choose red and I'm gonna paint, boom. You can see now that we have a layer. If I wanted to change this color, let's say to green, it wouldn't change it obviously because it's a paint layer, so it's permanently marking everything in here. You can see now I can paint green. If I wanted to add, let's say roughness and make it really rough, you can do there. If I wanted to make it really shiny, I should be able to drop it down here. And you can see it's adjusting in the viewport up there. And let's see, now you can see we're getting some light change. Let's go bump, let's do it. Okay. We're not getting a bump map. All right, let's uh, look back at this and see how we're doing. Bump, no bump. We're linked, we're good here. Let's go ahead and try just to delete it. Let's create a new one. So let's go bump. There we go. Must have been odd because I turned it off and turned it back on, so beware of that. Okay, let's go back to albedo, bump, and roughness. Let's go red again. Okay, let's freak this up a little. Okay, now you can see we're actually getting a bump. Turn that roughness all the way down. It's a little bigger. And let's make it really rough and just to get some, some variation in here, okay? And we'll do one with metal, metalness. And this works all just like it does in Substance Painter, okay? Okay, 
perfect. All right, now that we have all this, now what we can do is we can edit in the brush panel, okay? So now that we have all this selected, if we wanted to edit brushes, you can see over here, um, you can do a directional adaptive. You have all your different adjustments. You can also do drop downs and change everything even more. <clears throat> One thing that you're gonna wanna do is you wanna come down here and to select your brushes. If you double click into the brushes folder, you can see we have just a limited selected uh, a selection of brushes. We have um, like hard stamps and we have a couple in here. If you go down to the textures portion, you can see you have a lot more in the texture category. Um, you'll notice that there are little clouds um, uh, in the top right, so it doesn't work like substance, it doesn't load everything. So if you see something like a cloud like this, what you're gonna have to do is double click it, you'll see a gear, and then the cloud goes away. That means you've loaded it into the project. So what you can do is you can usually double click. If not, you can drag in and drop it into your brush. And then boom, you can see that we have the ability to adjust. We can adjust the opacity. You can edit anything you want. If you don't want it anymore, what you can do is just toggle it off right here or select the brush that you want. Okay. Same thing with eraser. Up in the top left, you choose your eraser. Shrink it up. You can erase a little bit. You can toggle your brush back on and just hit a little boom. You can see that you now erase it. Toggle that off. You have to fill. I'm not going to use that, but if you wanted to flood fill this all one color, I'd prefer to use a fill layer. Um, you have a gradient map, which you can create a gradient map. I will cover gradients later. And then you have this. So the cool thing about this is if I were to just select this and then I were to go back to my brush, I'm not going to be able to paint anything in here, but you can see it works as I slide in. So you can basically select what you want. You have a magic wand tool, a circle and a square, just like Photoshop. Okay. If you want off of it, you click, just click off of it um, and that'll click off the model and it'll delete the selection tool. All right. So that would be a paint layer. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn off the paint layer. I'm going to go up here to the right. There's a create new uh, fill layer. We're going to click that. That's going to blanket everything. So if I just want to select albedo, alt selection. Okay. You can UV triplanar here if you want to. I'm going to go triplanar. It doesn't really affect because it's not procedural. All right. And now, boom. Now the whole thing is going to change. Okay. So that's the difference between a fill layer and a paint layer. Fill affects everything. I'll talk about masking later so we can do a destructive and non-destructive workflow. But for now, that's the difference between a fill layer and a project, uh, projection layer. Fill layer doesn't allow you to draw on it. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to turn off the fill layer. I'm going to put the paint layer on top. You can see I'm going to turn this on, turn this on. If I were to go down here and change the color of this fill layer, let's say to green, you can see um, that the layer stack works like that. Okay. So now that I'm in my paint layer, uh, what we wanted to talk about was editing individual aspects of each layer. So in here, you can actually look at your current map and you can look at albedo, you can look at roughness, okay? You can look at everything like that, current map. Um, in the actual 3D view, you have to go to, I believe, full quality texture project and then you would have to click it like that, okay? so. Again, um, here you can just drop down the map that you want immediately in the UV space. But in 3D, you need to go to Texture Project and then you can select uh, from what you want, okay? Even the mask, which is kind of cool. If you wanted to edit something in here, um, what you can do is you can select which map you want to edit. You can obviously see it's going to change over here, but not over here. Um, and that'll be able that'll allow you to edit that specific map, but it's going to take a little bit more than that, okay? And before we jump into there, I wanted to show you something. Opacity-wise, if you wanted to edit just the albedo, you can see that when I do this, it's removing the entire map, height uh, or the bump map, it's uh, roughness, color, everything's going away when you adjust this. So to, the ability to edit each individual map, like up here, you're going to actually have to go right here to the right. There's a little link toggle opacity linking. So you're going to click it off. Now you have a slash through it. Now you're able to turn off just the color. Everything else is there. So roughness and height. Okay. And this will allow me to adjust, let's say the color down a little bit. Let's go to the bump to adjust the bump. You can see the bump is now gone. The bump is coming back. Okay. So now you can edit. Now you can still turn this off, toggle this on, and then you can do this and it'll still re remove everything. Okay. So you have the ability to toggle it on and off to edit individual channels or to edit the thing as a whole. Another thing that we can do here is do blending. Okay. 
So blending, say I want to do overlay, you can see that just like Photoshop, just like Substance Planner, you can edit any of the blending modes for here. Um, another key component that you're gonna wanna uh, know is the usage of unlinking and adjusting like the albedo or the height in the um, in the viewer. So if I were to drop down to bump, oh, I'm sorry, bump map, you can see it here, but you can't see it over here and say that's fine. You're okay working in this space, but say you want to work in the 3D space, you're going to have to come to texture project. You're going to have to come to bump. You'll see now you're getting your bump map where white is raised um, and dark is uh, indented and then gr neutral is your is your 50% gray. Okay, so here now you can see that there's an edit. You can also go up to your brushes and you can actually paint, okay? And you can see, you can't see what's happening right now, but if I were to shift back into full quality, you can see it edited. And if I shift here back to Albedo, you see you're good to go, okay? So now we've covered layers. We've covered paint layers, which are basically just painting and they are permanent. Whatever color you choose is what you're getting. Um, we talked about the different adjustments you make in here, how to change out the brushes and the eraser, how to do selection tools. We've talked about fill layers, which is a blanket fill height roughness on the entire thing. So, which is really nice because you can add everything and we'll talk about masking later. So we can make that a little shinier, okay. We talked about the layer stack, putting one on top of the other, putting one underneath, and you can also choose how you want that to come through. If you want to hide the height or if you want to let certain things pass through, okay. We also talked about how to edit and view the subcomponents of a layer. So the albedo, the roughness, the, me the metalness, everything. Uh, we talked about how to adjust the layer as a whole. We talked about how to unlink the layer and adjust just the color or just the height. And with that, that'll end this video. In the next video, we are going to talk about masking. We're going to talk about black versus white masks. We're going to talk about masking by component piece, like each individual mesh. We'll talk about masking via ID maps. And with that, we're also gonna talk about destructive versus non-destructive workflows using fill layers and masks versus paint layers and masks. All right, until then.